All right, Orlando, let's uh, talk a little bit about DiCapella. You uh, have been on the road with them this year. You're, you're well, not at, not this year, was it this year? Yeah. It was this year, mm -hmm. you're right, right. And you're now on a break until mm -hmm. you go back out again. Yeah. So how did DiCapella come about for you? Uh, what did your audition process go like? I know the group was formed um, relatively quickly, and you guys yeah. were thrown right in. Yeah. Um, so pretty much, I found out about a casting call my friend sent me. I initially was not going to audition. She said, I think you'd be great for this. I said, yeah, this looks cool. Um, the week of the audition, I had a really bad head cold, like a fever. I was sick. And so my fever broke maybe two days before the deadline. And I gave myself a day to just get back together. And then that day before it was due, I was like, uh, I don't think I'm going to do it. And my friend said, you're being ridiculous. Get up come over because at that particular time she had a um, whole setup for self tape so she's like get up come over let's do your self tape and so i we i sat down with her and we had strategized like i think i want to do something really interesting if this is the only time they're going to see me i'm not going in at first the first initial thing they're going to see is a video i want to stand out so i did a lot of um i ended up going to party city getting costumes and I did a throwback to Disney Channel movies, Disney Channel original shows, and Disney classics um, that I referenced throughout my video. I referenced the Mickey Mouse Club at the end. I did the, the Mickey Mouse Club song tag at the end. And of course, they asked you to tell us about yourself, and there's a standard thing you had to audition with. I did that. We recorded at like 11. I was done at 3 the, the next day, the, the day it was due. I said, well, there isn't a time stamp on when this is due, so I'm assuming it's 11.59 p.m. on the day it's due. So I went to bed, <laughs> got up at about mm, maybe 4 or 5 that evening. I sat down and edited the video for about 3 or 4 hours, and I literally sent it in at probably about 10.45, 11 o'clock. And I was like, if it happens, it happens. Now, fun fact, literally in November of 2017, I found a ticket. My, my best friend and I were going to LA. We said we just wanted to go. 2018 was the year of my coastal. So we found a very, very cheap ticket. I mean, $169 round trip ticket to LA. On the back of a bird. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but where was, it, was a, it was through an app that she had found, and, and they found this ticket, and we bought it immediately back in November. So when I sent the audition tape in, I was like, I hope that this doesn't fall on the week I'm about to leave. But if it does, you know, what am I going to do? Because I already, I was, I'm already set to go to L.A. Like, I'm going to be by Coastal. I know there's something out there for me. Well, sure, sure as luck would have it, I got an email on Monday saying, Hey, we'd love to see you in the New York audition callbacks on Wednesday. I, I was leaving for L.A. that Tuesday. And I emailed back and I said, you know, I'd love the opportunity to be a part of this. I would do anything, but I'm going to be in L.A. this week, unfortunately. Nothing I can do to change it. And they said, oh, we're actually having callbacks in L.A. You should come to those this weekend. And so I was like, that was a little easier than I expected. When things like that align, for me, I'm always like, okay, the universe is working. God is working in a way that I'm, I'm not... I don't know what this is, but this is too good to be true. I'm always, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm like, is this, is this for real? Am I? Let me pinch myself. And so that ended up working out. I stressed all the way to the audition because I was like, oh God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, they send you materials in advance, and I was like, okay, let me do the best I can to just like brush up on this. It had been a while coming from doing background work and doing pop work. It had been a while since I've had to read music. It had been a while since I had to access that skill set, and this gig requires that. So in the callbacks, you know, they're sending you music. They're sending you sheet music. You have to study it and get it, have it ready for the callbacks. So I go to the first callback. I come in. I say hello to everyone, and I'm nervous. And immediately they throw you into it. It's like, okay, so here we are. We're going to do the song. Um, and five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to have you do this and this and this and you're still singing and this and blah, blah and they're recording like this and there's a panel of people so it's extremely it was extremely intimidating the best thing that i knew at that particular point um was be yourself that's what's gotten you here thus far be yourself I ended up going i felt good about the callback didn't know if i was gonna get it they told us we would know that evening I get a call that evening saying hey we'd like you to come to the next callback 
would get the music um, that night. And I had, I had gone out to celebrate that I had done well on the callback. So I was like, oh no, I'm not going to get back to my Airbnb until like 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I go back, I try to study the music for as long as I can. Another fun fact, the Airbnb I was staying in, the fire alarm kept going off all night. So I literally got about four hours of sleep that night after studying as much as I could, going into a 9 a.m. callback. Um, went in, I didn't know what to expect again, and they said, okay, you've made it to the next round. And this is where we all thought we were going into a boot camp. At this particular point, I had just auditioned with the LA crew. I didn't know what the New York, I didn't know any of the New York people that were coming. That so, would be RJ. Sophia yeah, I didn't know anyone. Do, do, Antonio. Do Antonio. Yeah, I didn't know anyone that was coming from. I had met. I had met. I think I ran into Joe and maybe like Shelly at the audition. Um, but I, I didn't. I didn't know what the next step was. The plan was that it was a boot camp. That was what we were told. Well, we get there and they're like, "Okay, you guys got the gig," and we're like, because we could tell it was like not that many people here and. Seven. Where's everybody else? It's like, okay, you all have the gig. So there were seven, including the New York guys that flew out? Mm -hmm. or oh, So they were all out. Yeah, everybody had come seven, out. seven and then they got rid no, of No, no, no. <laughs> everybody came for what we thought was a boot camp to, to find out, oh, this is the group. They tell us this is the group. They give us a, you know, a pretty extensive dissertation of like, this is what this is going to entail. Yeah. This is what we're about to do. Um, you know, at that particular time, the casting call had called for there to be a tour immediately. Yeah. That all was, they were, they regrouped everything. And they were like, so what we're going to do now that we have you guys, for this next week, we're going to record an album. We're gonna, and they handed us a binder of music. Everyone got a binder of music that we had never seen. Some of the songs were songs that we had done in callbacks, maybe three. And the rest of the album was stuff we were sight reading. Yeah. So everybody was literally in a different room, in a different corner of a different room, learning their part, being called in to go record one by one. We hadn't even sung really together yet. So we were just getting the album done. And then we went home after that. That's when we came back out and there was a whole nother plan. That's why all of last year was like us doing a bunch of different promotion to promote the group. And so we had a chance to do some amazing things, like our first ever... Uh, uh, performance as a group was on television in front of 8 million people on American Idol for Disney Night. That was just mind blowing to me. And I would assume for each of your six group members, had probably never done anything like that either. I mean, no, I mean it was it was something uh, the close again the closest that I had gotten was the voice as a contestant on a show, not as a special guest. We were special guests mm -hmm. on American Idol that performed throughout the night. Um, then after that, we did the Hollywood Bowl. It was like, okay, American Idol, now you guys are doing the Hollywood Bowl. And That's we were crazy. like, right out, right, out of the game. right out of that. And we were opening the show at the Hollywood Bowl. And then we ended up getting asked to be a part of the production. So that was a pretty intense two weeks because we were learning. We were literally going to rehearsals from about 10 to 6. We would take an hour. And then we would have our decapella rehearsal from 7 to 10. For about two weeks straight, we were learning two different shows. Um, it was extremely exhausting, extremely I taxing. Saying, you guys haven't stopped since, but really. The, 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 I can't tell you how much I learned in those two weeks. Then from there, it was, oh, we're going to put you on the Incredibles 2 soundtrack. So now we're going to have you go to Pixar's studio and, and promote that. And boom, now you're on the soundtrack. Then at the end of the year, the album dropped. We did some stuff with ABC. I mean... I'm, I just, I can't tell you the experiences that I've had in this group and how it's like totally blown my mind. Everything tops itself. Yeah. Everything tops itself. So the tour was something that I, you know, we were already in a groove. We had established our dynamic and our sound and our synergy. So the tour was something we were kind of like, we don't know how it's going to factor out, but we know how to stick together. We know how to make this work for each other. We know how to live in close quarters. We know how to be around each other and give each other space. Mm -hmm. um, I think like the, the most exciting part of tour was being in a new place every day, but, but also having that, that the, the bus was home. Like you always had the bus. The bus was always home. There was always something stationary and 
and to me grounding about knowing that like okay yeah we're in Milwaukee today and tomorrow we're gonna be in Chicago but there's always the bus the bus is always home so it was it was a lot um, as far as the traveling and you know having to really keep yourself healthy a lot of what I did on tour was when, whenever we had time in the morning because a lot of times we had promo stuff on days where we had shows every day you had or, a show you had an early morning promo yeah. radio stuff so when we when we had the promo stuff, a lot, when we didn't have promo stuff, a lot of what I would do is get up as early as I could and go to the gym. That was my that was that was cathartic for me, like just having an opportunity to like be to myself, release, and 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 be in motion, doing something other than performing. It was a nice mental break, and for me, I'm always trying to figure out new ways to like take care of myself, take care of my body, keep myself up. So. Being able to challenge myself on tour, like, ooh, where am I gonna find the gym today? It became a challenge for me, like me, Antonio, and one of the production guys, it became a challenge for us. Okay, we're in a new city, who's looking at Planet Fitness? And I would always be like, there's one 10 minutes away, and there was. There was always a Planet Fitness or some it's like type a of gym. Starbucks, right? Everywhere. Literally, yeah. there was always something 10 minutes away from us, and so we started going as a group. Like, days when we would have off, we would go to either the, if there wasn't a, you know, uh, a gym close by and it was just a hotel gym, we'd all go to the gym at the same time. Um, so it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a fun bonding experience. Um, I think being able to perform in some of the most beautiful venues that I've ever seen. I've never performed at the Ryman. Legendary. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, King's Theater. Legendary. Yeah. You know, so those types of things, like, I will always have with me. The memories that, that we created together, um, I always tell them, like, this journey is ours and nobody else's because no one's going to be able to come back and say that they knew what was going on but us you know we were here together and that's this is a that's what will bond us forever you know so and on those days where where, where people were tired and exhausted i would always say little things like that just to give us all perspective like i know we tired but listen this is our journey no one else is gonna have this. This is how we're bonded together. So tour wraps up. Get a break. I get a break. Which you didn't really take a break. I didn't really take a break. Did, I was working. Did, and then I, you guys came back together for a uh, day. To oh honor right, Deke. yeah, we did the um, we did um, total vocal mm -hmm. with Deke. He asked us to um, be special guests, which we were elated to do. Um, that was an experience too. Just seeing him working his element. Because um, when we work with Deke, it's, it's very, <clears throat> because he's so busy and, and so in demand, it's a very limited amount of time. Um, and so when we get a chance to see him in his element outside of us, uh, it's to me a very extraordinary thing. I genuinely feel like um, as a human being, separate from who he is as the godfather of acapella, as a human being, He's a very gentle and loving and caring and nurturing soul. And I think that that uh, uh, coupled with his genius, I always tell him, like, the joke, the running joke between him and I is, like, we know you're a genius, we don't care. But, like, he literally is a genius. He's able to go into so many different musical styles. And he has a, a grounding in them. He has a familiarity with so many different musical styles. And he literally incorporates that into how he arranges and how he's able to work with different voices and how he's able to create sound with different different energies and different voices and different uh, 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 vocalists. So I, I find that very interesting and I find it extremely, he's someone that inspires me just being able to see him in his element. So, and then it was Carnegie Hall. Like I- That dump? I just could, I couldn't, you know, <laughs> and the crazy thing is I, we were on, I, I was on tour mode, so, I was just just going, going, going. I didn't tell a lot of people until I remembered. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, you got a show. And my friends laid into me so hard. Yeah, because tickets sold out. They were like, we I can't believe I you so did not tell me yeah. that you were going to be at Carnegie Hall. Like, Carnegie Hall is a big deal. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I literally am just, I'm trying, I'm on the go and I'm trying to slow down. Mm -hmm. Because technically we're off tour, but we're still on because we still got this gig. So I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it like that. Which you know, it's one of those things I have to tell myself: be present, 
because you don't even realize the things that you're doing until you look up and you're like, wow, I did that. I did that. Um, so that was a that was a moment. And then when I got when we got on, you know, of course we have, we've had this break, but I ended up having an opportunity to work with um, uh, the music director for Color Purple. He just did Choir Boy, and now this is his. Um, we did a reading, a musical presentation of a work written by Leland Duran Thompson and uh, Jason Michael Webb, this who I'm referencing, um, asked me to be in the ensemble for this 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 presentation. Um, this is uh, it's called Wildflower, and it's based on the life of C.D. Maine, who is uh, Rafiki in Broadway's Lion King. And so it's a really, really beautiful story. The music is amazing. And I really had a, an incredible time working with some such high-level um, artists and uh, directors and choreographers. Um, and I think, again, like I was telling you before, doing the work that I've done with Di Capella and seeing how, you know, we stood up a tour in two weeks. It was an intense two weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, 12-hour days. But doing something like that allowed me to understand that, like, a lot of times in the creative world, that's how, that's how these big works come together. These big productions, they're always changing. Something's always changing every night. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where I'm learning, like, okay, don't shy away from that process. Don't be intimidated. There's no need to have anxiety. Just know where you stand. Know where you fall in that. And for me, it's like, come in on my music. Yeah. Be familiar with what it is, the part that I've, I've been given. Know, take stage direction. Know how to take notes and, and internalize them and, and immediately apply because you got to be able to move quick. Now let's talk about your clothing line. Yes, okay. I started, so I started Black Boy Joy Apparel in 2017. It was a, I wrote a song in 2016 called Black Boy Joy and I wanted to write something that I felt like was specific to my narrative and... Um, what, the way I was feeling uh, about my space and existence in the world at that time, um, I really wanted to create something positive that was connected to my community and specifically black men. Um, we're in a climate where I think socially, economically, uh, there, it's if if people have not been able to see a disparity um, with regards to inner city and specific to African American communities, I think we're living in a time right now where that veil is open, like it's completely it's completely like uncovered. Like you can see, there's just a disparity when it comes to what it is that I got in a public school education versus my white counterparts. Um, that's always existed, but I think I'm at, I'm at a point where I look at myself as more than just an artist. I realize, you know, people who see me walking down the street don't look at me and go, "Oh, he looks like a musician." They look they look at me and go, "He looks like a black man." And and not everybody's internalization of that is always a positive because there may be a stigma or there may be an idea that they have in their mind about how I will react. So you know. People often tell me you smile a lot. I smile a lot because I feel like it's important. One, on a human level, but two, because people, I'm changing a narrative in people's minds even if they don't know I'm changing it. Just disgusting that you're gonna have to do, but, but as, I mean, it, I digress. It's, the, it's the reality of where <laughs> uh, we are, yeah. you know? And it's, it's, it's really okay. I'm not, I don't feel any angst about it. For me, it's about figuring out how to turn a negative into a positive. And so that's where the song came from. But I felt like at that particular point, it was something for the first time in a while, probably since my album, that I had written anything that I felt like, ooh, this really is in a direction of like the art I wanna create. I'm saying something that's relatable, it's real, it's raw, it's talking about common experiences because everybody can relate to feeling like they wanna, uh, they have a story that they wanna tell. How do I take it beyond this song? That's what I thought. I felt like the spirit and the energy of the song, I was like, how do I take it beyond that? And I toyed with it for a while. I was like, well, I could do merch, you know, and sell it on my my my, uh, my website, and like every artist does. And I was like, well, what about a clothing line? And I actually sat down with my mom, and sat and, and I ran the idea past her. She said, well, what do you think about doing it like a hashtag? 
And I was like, oh yeah. And she was like, okay, so this is what we need to do. You need to come up with your samples. You need to come up with this. You need to sit down and do your business plan. Because my mom works in project management. She has two degrees, a certification, and has worked in contracts for most of her career. So a lot of what she does is um, risk evaluation, figuring out like, if I do this, how many ways can I see successful and how many ways could it possibly trail off? So when I brought the idea to her, she was like, you need to, let's poke some holes in this idea and figure out like how we're gonna make it work. I actually started the website um, on, while I was on the cruise. When I got that cruise contract, we had limited internet. So I had nothing to do but like sit on my computer and wait till we got to a port to then upload things to my Dropbox. So I had time to sit down with designs and figure out what I wanted it to look like. And then as time went on, you know, I premiered it in, I believe, August 1st, my birthday. August 1st, uh, 2017 was when I premiered the photo line. And as I've continued to navigate, I've come up with different things. It's like, ooh, let's do an I support line for people who, for, for women of color, and then for people who may not be black people that want to support the movement. I was like, I don't want this to just be exclusive to, to my community. I know it is for my community, but if I can get more people involved in this movement that are outside of black people, outside of brown people, I feel like the more the better. Because it lends, it lends itself to awareness and consciousness that, hey, like there is some type of, there's nothing wrong with people celebrating who they are, and I get that this is what this is. I specifically wanted to do something that I felt like would change and shift the narrative of what the world, what the media, what, the, what things were being put out there about black men. Because I feel like in my experience, I've been lifted up by so many different people in my life. And I wanted to create something that I felt like was inclusive of that. So that's kind of where that came from. Now you're going to go back on the road with Dick Bella. Yeah, I'm about to go back on the road. So we're going to Japan. Um, we, we, we held that under our hats for a little while. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, we didn't know if we could say anything. But we're going to Japan. Um, we're, going, we're going out there to do some promo. And then I believe we're touring in the summer over there. Which should be interesting. I've never been to Japan. I did a gig in Thailand. I did a gig in Bangkok years ago. Archie is performed there, hasn't he? One of the, yeah, yeah. He's been over there. Yeah, he's been over there. He, did, he, he just recently did a gig, I think, over there. He'll be the tour guide. He'll be the tour guide. I have no idea. But we're, we're you know, they, they, the thing about the Disney family is that they're setting us up really well where, you know, we have resources to um, help us learn the culture, help us learn the language so that when we go over there, we're not putting our foot in our mouths, literally. Um, and just understanding like, values code of ethics when it comes to going to another country. I think those things are very important. Culturally, I'm extremely excited to like take in something different from what I'm used to. Um, I, I find that exciting to be in that a different exciting. place. I and was be literally going to like, say that out. That, that sounds exciting. You know, just be able to be a sponge somewhere yeah. else, sit and take, take in the culture and see. You know how we sit here in the park? They might be doing something completely different in their parks. That's right. So I'm just, I'm interested to see the beauty of the architecture, the fashion. That's awesome. Like, so, yeah. And then hopefully you'll come back here and uh, give some of your U.S. fans another dose. You know, we are, uh, our, I, I hope, I was to speak for myself, I hope that we, we get an opportunity to go back to a lot of places that we went. Because yeah. there were a lot of places that showed us a lot of love. And I really, really appreciated being able to have that fan to that fan to artist interaction. Um, I shouldn't even say fans; we consider our fans family. So it's just it's, it was nice to be able to like put faces with names of yeah. people who wrote to us and things like that. Um, just make those those personal connections. Yeah, because you're all pretty good at on Instagram replying to people. Yeah. Which is really, it's really it's, cool. It's new, it's new for us. At the same time, a lot of us have had different successes. I always say we're a collective of artists. Mm -hmm. Everybody's coming from different walks of life yeah. in, their, in the entertainment industry. But it's really exciting and it's kind of overwhelming for people to show you so much love yeah. um, about something that you're doing that you're like, whoa, I, you know, thank you. But I didn't, you know, I don't, I don't know anything other to say than to say thank you. Right, because you're to you guys, you're doing a job, 
yeah. a job that you love, but you're not DMing somebody that works at McDonald's giving you your Big Mac. We we don't see ourselves as celebrities. I mean, it's a, it's a very very jarring thing to see people look at you like that. And I think the tour kind of put us in a space of like, do people look at us like that? Yeah. You know, we will walk out and do our meet and greet. Oh my God, da da! Can we get a picture? And it's like, yeah, sure. We just it's it's just new. It's yeah. new, so we're still taking it in. But it's it's one of those things that you really appreciate the journey of what this is. That's awesome. Orlando, thank you so much for giving me so much of your time. Thank you. And being such an engaging and uh, fun interview. I thank appreciate you. it. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. Now.